You know, uh, this week was a big week because the ISSA released all the football schedules. Yeah. Ours is uh, pretty same as last year. No, yeah, nothing you, changed. You pretty much know what's coming, at least when you look at the Nick 10s. I do know that uh, Sycamore, somebody brought that up, they'll be traveling to Gary, Indiana for a game because, you know, the Fox Valley is like nine teams now. Right. So they're going to there, and I didn't check the whole list. But, you know, the interesting part was I got somebody say, hey, you need to do Wisconsin. I go, yeah, I forgot that. I didn't know they had their schedules <laughs> up. So I went and looked at it. Here's what the Big 8 does, which Parker and Craig and Beloit are in Memorial. After two years, they do a schedule two years. One year they play at the one site, and then the next year they play at the other site. But the next two years, they jumble everything up and rotate the rotation, even of all the teams. Okay. So, you know, because last year, um, Craig played at uh, Beloit Memorial. So when I looked up mm-hmm. there and they played the sixth game, I go, well, that's weird. So I got a hold of Eric Burton, uh, who is the uh, commissioner, which is nice, in, <laughs> in, in Wisconsin. They say, yeah, we do it for several sports. I'm sure basketball is included. Where at the end of that two-year period, they take the whole schedule and rejumble it and give it a reorder. Because some people thought, well... They don't want to play the same teams in a row like that. And I like right. the idea, but I, that's I, a lot of work for it, everybody. It is a lot of work, you know, but when you, you, you know, especially if you look at the Nick 10, it'd be easy to do because it's, you're not, it's the same teams, so it's not like you're, you know, have to worry about non-conference games, those kind of things. The only thing you have to worry about is like Swanson and, and, and the stadium stuff. That, right, just, you know, making sure things are free, and, and it does make it tougher. You, you do have that right where he's, you know, you look at, uh, you know, other sports, you know, if they've got to play soccer or, or whatever the case may be, uh, you know. But you can always do the easy thing there, say, okay, you are going to be home these weeks. You, you know, you'll still be home these weeks. And, you know, so maybe you don't quite mix it up as much. I feel like the Nick 10 does that every 10 years, maybe. They haven't done it since I've been here. I, I know. It's, it's been a long time. I feel like I remember talking to somebody about this once, and they said it was like every 10 years or something. I mean, point is, I think we might have that coming up soon, but you would like to see that jumble up. I know we've had some times where, you know, all the top games are right at the beginning of the season, you, you know, or you get some teams that have to play, you know, well, next Carl year, and Egan boiling right in a row. Next year, that last game is the first game, so you play that school basically two times right. in a row. Exactly. You get a lot of that, you, you know. So, you know, it, I think it would be fun to mix it up a little bit where maybe you could, uh, you know, move some games around. You know, how much fun would it be to see, you know, Harlem and Hananiga or one of them playing Boylan on the last week of the season? And we've had that happen in, in different years just because that's how the schedule fell. Uh, but it'd be fun to have some of that lined up where you could look at the last week of the season and say, boy, we got some big games lined up, you know, that, that could really have some impact on, on what happens with the conference championship. And uh, he was very nice enough to explain all that to me because I had never yeah. seen that before where they jumble up every, after every two years. But Well, and it, it'd be really nice, too, because like I said, I know there's teams that have had to play Harlem, Hananiga, Boylan right in a row. Yeah, they'd probably uh, like and, to see and, that and change. And I think some of them that have had Auburn, I think there's one team I feel like they had Auburn added in that mix the last couple of years as Auburn's gotten better where... Man, you look at that four in a row like that where you got really physical, tough teams coming through. I'm sure they'd love to spread that out a little bit. You're going to have to play them either way, uh, but I'm sure it'd be fun to have some breaks in between. It does make a difference, it though. It does. And, and, and basketball, they made that adjustment on Wednesday. And I think the yeah. coaches liked it because it does oh, yeah. give them some time in between to make those uh, adjustments because right. it used to be Friday, Saturday. That was, that was tough. Right. Oh, yeah. It was it was very tough to do that because, like, like they said, you I mean, you couldn't really – prepare for the Saturday game, you know, when they were doing Friday, yeah, Saturday. Plus, if you had a just, tough Friday game, it was tough. Well, yeah, and then that was the thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, if you play Auburn on a Friday night, you know. And then they had to play, turn around, play maybe a Hanan Ex- you know. Exactly, and there's people that had to do those kind of things, especially, like, you look at that, and two completely different styles, that's tough to prepare for. Uh, you know, so I do know that they like that, you know, where they can have a little bit more time to prepare for their opponents, things like that. You know, I think it would be nice in football to mix it up a little bit so that way, you know, maybe you wouldn't have to have so many physical games in a row and, you know, not feel like every week, you know, especially if you got some of those top teams right in a row that you got, uh, you know, a big game every single week. And then it'd be fun to line up some, uh, some, some tough games there at the last week of the season. Is that Tom Kirschbaum? Let's talk to Tom Kirschbaum. Let's hear what Tom has to say. Mr. Auburn. I am here. <laughs> what do you need, Mr. Auburn? I just want to let you know that the Nick 10 football schedule is set until 2020. 2020, okay. And then they rotate, they're going to reshuffle it? Um, what Coach Apino told me a few years ago, it is every 10 years. And um, at the end of this football season would be the 10 years. 
uh, because it started when Belvedere North joined okay. the conference. So this would be the 10 years. But whoever's doing the schedule and the coaches agreed that they would extend it to 2020. Gotcha. Location. But they are going to shuffle like they do up in Wisconsin, then where they'll, ever, they'll, they'll do a uh, random order like? I don't know how they do it, who decides it. <laughs> but um, okay. th- th- they will review it at that time and decide let's redo it or we'll keep it the same rotation. What was the last time that uh, Auburn beat? Uh, let me see. What team can we pick now? <laughs> you know all that stuff. Give me a give me a, a good before I let you go. Give me a good Auburn football trivia answer. You got one, Tom? Uh. <laughs> did I did I catch it with you know like uh, when was the last time they lost on a turf field or something like that? You know you know all that stuff. Who was Auburn's very first opponent in 1960? Ooh, that's a good one. Uh, who who was it, Matt? Yeah, that, that'd be my guess. Would be West. It was actually Rockford East. Rockford oh, there East. There you go. <laughs> I knew we were on the wrong side. We were talking. We don't even know what east and west direction is in this station. So that's so, good. So, so technically, East is Auburn's oldest rival. There you True. go. See, that's good. I knew you would know, Tom. Very good <laughs> job. Thanks for calling up, too, buddy. Thanks for listening. Anytime, guys. Bye. That's our friend Tom Kirschbaum, Mr. Auburn, I call him. You know, the one interesting thing out of that, or more than one interesting thing, but, uh, you know, when they talk about extending that to 2020, because there's been so much talk about, you know, do you expand the conference, you know, what where a team's going to go. I wonder if that was some of the thought behind it was, you know, let's not make any changes right now in case there's... Future, oh, yeah. future changes that like are going to happen. Like Sycamore and Exactly. You know, if we add some teams to the conference or, or whatever, let's let's not make, do anything drastic right now just in case, you know. You know, I did, a, I did a little, you know how it is, you get a little free time. I did a little story about if Sycamore and DeKalb were in the Nick 10. Right. You ought to see the responses. Oh, yeah. That thing lit up the board. And you know what? Right now, Sycamore thinking about going to Gary. You don't know what you're going to get when you play. In, I'm serious. Yeah. That, that's a mess over there with charter yeah. schools. Have you seen all that stuff? <laughs> oh, I mean, yeah. It's a mess. Yep. So I'm sure they would much rather travel to Auburn or yeah, somewhere I'm, like I'm that. Sure, I'm absolutely sure that and they see, would. Now, folks, here's why you want to add DeKalb and Sycamore. This will really some people rolling out of their bed now thinking about it. If you put them in there, go to two six-team divisions, yep. and you can still play. You don't have to even schedule Crossover all the Crossover games or yep. whatever, yep. But you get two champions that automatically get into the playoffs. Exactly. So DeKalb and, well, and, 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 DeKalb and Sycamore aren't against it. No, I, I'm sure they aren't. <laughs> you know, you add those two, and, you know, maybe you put them with Belvedere, Belvedere North, so they can lessen some of the travel that's there. Yeah, and Freeport. You know, yeah, figure out what you want to do with the rest. I don't know if Freeport would be farther or not. Uh, Freeport would be a pretty long drive, but, yeah. it, you know. Although from there, they because they'd be able to hop on the highway. Every, long, every away game for Freeport is not a... Exa- that, exactly. That's not a quick drive from Freeport exa- to here. Exactly. But, you know, I, I think it'd be a smart move. You, you could... Uh, Add some good teams to the mix, but but I wonder if that's why they decided to extend it because you start figuring, you know, if something like that's going to happen. Obviously, it hasn't happened at this point, so it probably wouldn't happen until sometime during this season or towards the end of the year or whatever, it, you know. So it probably wouldn't switch for next year either. So now you're looking at probably the earliest, even if this happens sometime soon, probably the earliest that things would probably happen would be like the 2018 season. You know, yeah, right now it would probably, yeah. So, you know, so yeah, so that's yeah, maybe you say instead of hey, instead of let's making a bunch of changes right now, let's just kind of keep status quo. And then if something happens, it, the NIB we'll, 12 is like what 10 right now, so yeah, they, yeah, yeah, but they still have trouble filling up some of those games the way they right. do stuff, so right, but yeah, I mean, it'd make complete sense, like you said, you could have uh, the two divisions, still don't have to worry about non conference games because you can just do kind of like the big northern was doing. You do the crossover games, that kind of stuff, and you always, so you always got a matchup going on. Uh, yeah, you get two champions, and and it, and it might open depending on how you split things up. You know, it, it could certainly open up some more teams for opportunities in the area to maybe make the playoffs. I'll post that story again because I, you know, sometimes when you post up on the the hub, yeah, some stories take right off. Like I put a story on the other day just about Fred and and, and the right. Toronto Raptors and stuff, and that thing took off, and there was a lot of stories out there, but oh, yeah. you know, there was a lot of tweets in there and stuff. It's just amazing sometimes what a story will hit. That one hit real good. Yeah. And a lot of DeKalb and Sycamore people said, yeah. Well, it, it just, it, it makes sense to me. I, it, 
It's not too far of a drive. You know, it'd be no different than Freeport coming in to play games. Yeah, we, uh, uh, it, the Rockford know. schools, and everybody, we got it made right now. Yeah. Oh, they yeah. would have to travel maybe a game or two extra a year. But right. But, you know, good. even where they're at, though, for you know, there, there's... Some towns that might be a little bit closer than Rockford, but they're still traveling a little bit. I mean, it's not, yeah. you know, other than, you know, those two right next to each other, it's not like they're... Plus in basketball, they go all over for tournaments. Exactly. So I, I think it would make absolute sense. I think they could compete in this conference. Uh, you, you know, I, I'd love to see something like that happen. Okay, you can, uh, you know what I'll do? I'll post that story again. We'll get your comments so you can feed in on that. But uh, yeah. that would be interesting, wouldn't it? Yeah, it'd be very, very interesting. Interesting point, though, on the new big, you know, Big Northern this year is going to have 11 teams. Yep. They will not play everybody. Right. And they've kind of worked out the scheduling, you know, like, you know, Rockford Christian's had a few tough years. They're trying to work that out a little bit. Yep. But I think I saw only one school who had to really go out and find somebody out in the boonies to play. Yeah. The rest of them they did with the Kishwaukee River Conference, like with... Uh, Woodstock schools played, right. and, and maybe Marengo played somebody yet. Right. But it worked out better than they thought it would for football because they were grown-ups about it and put their <laughs> differences beside. Because they could have said, well, screw you. You left us. Right. We're not going to work with you anymore. But they did, and that saved a lot of things. And we got all those up on the State Line Sports Hub. You can That's, check out a lot of it's them. It's amazing how easy some of this can be if you act like a grown-up about it. Yeah, uh, there's a lot of personal you know, stuff. There, there, there is, and I do understand that. But I tell you what, too, you know, say, sometimes it can be easier to act better about it when you're looking around it and you're trying to figure out where you're going to find a game at. Like say, a Gary Indiana. Yeah, yeah, you know what? Maybe, maybe I'm not going to hold it against this guy too much, so that way we can hopefully get a game out of it and I don't have to travel to Gary, Indiana. Or I think we had somebody last year go up to Minnesota or something like that. Yeah. So. Well, you know, it, it's it's... It's kind of weird how that works out, but you know, a lot of schools now are scheduling all within conference, so it's hard to find somebody yeah. Oh, yeah. that doesn't have a non-conference it, game It is schedule. very, very hard. I know, I think the IHSA has that out there somewhere where you can see who doesn't have a game, so that way oh, yeah. to try to help, you know, yeah, they, they have some of that point. up. If you go look at our schedule, we also have the link back to the IHSA so you can see everybody's football schedule, but it can be a mess. Yeah. And if you're an independent, hang on, baby. Right. You get to see the world. And they don't let you travel too far in Illinois. You're only allowed to go so far. So. Well, and the, and the tough part is I, I know all those teams want to get a home game if they can, if they've got a game to schedule. And that's where it starts really getting tough because they'd rather, number one, they'd rather not travel if they don't have to. They'd rather get the home game out of it, you know, get the revenue that comes in from that. So when you get a bunch of teams kind of holding out for the same thing, that, that's when it starts getting really tough.